my garage has become <laughs> borderline unusable. I got stuff I need to bring to the basement and then a whole bunch of van parts I need to put away in a furnace I never installed. So I'll think about that this summer. But this has the other side, rear left brake is hanging and dragging every time I stop and it's really annoying. So parts will be here tomorrow. I'm gonna take advantage of the daylight and take everything apart today. So hopefully this will do is slap stuff in. I don't know if my jacking point, or not jacking point, but my jack stand point is a little sketchy or not, but I'm not gonna be under it, under it. I guessed correctly these are 19 like six of them and uh, I haven't had the rear wheels off of this yet so it'll be interesting to see because <laughs> getting to the air fill for the center inside wheel is kind of annoying maybe I can put an extension on it oh, not messing around Seems to have quite a bit of meat on it, but I got new parts kind of so might as well I get the other side off, see how that looks. I got the other side off barely. I get the breaker bar off because the impact wasn't doing it, which is surprising because that thing can really kick it out. But yeah, super screwed up. I should have loosened them on the ground, but generally the torque wrench takes care of it. So I shove my breaker bar on the brake pedal, which isn't going to be great since this one locks. Ooh, I should release that. <laughs> but that held it enough. I thought I was going to break my breaker bar there trying to get that off and I ended up heating the bolt before it would pop. And look it up and the 3500 is 138 foot-pounds with steel wheels, 190 newtons. And the 2500 with steel wheels is the one that's like 170 or 177. So we're just going to spray some goo wherever I think goo should go and eat some dinner and come back out and see what's up. I don't know if these separate. Maybe I'll read. I got the service manual. I should probably read that. Um, put some in that hole. Why not? Some bolt and stuff up here. Some bolts somewhere down here. So, you know what? Get everywhere. Who cares? I don't. Well, I do, but I don't. The arm comes out. Big old bolt comes slide. Okay. Five minutes till there. Go spray. peeked through the manual and it essentially yeah this this ring comes off from here with these bolts and then you pull the caliper and carrier and then you get this thing off but there's a e-brake on the inside like it was on my pickup truck which is probably going to hang up on uh annoying but let's see what i can get it's uh it's a hub I took them off so I get these other bolts, Harrison. Oh. Why? Because you gotta take all the brakes off. What? Alright, we're gonna get loud again. You ready? Yeah. How did I break it? You just took it apart, it's not broken. It broke. You want to try to put it back together? Can you try to put this back Yeah. Here you are. You will try to work on it. Now, why don't you work on the front tire? Like a yeah, yeah, like that's coming off. Get a hammer. 
Hey, you try. Push. Push as hard as you can. Did you get it? <laughs> okay, I'll try it. Here, you try this one. Come here and try this one. This way? Yeah, nope. The other way. Push it down. Oh, there you go. It's starting to go. Let's I don't know about it. it. No, don't, don't hold it. You're gonna get all, don't touch that. See, so you're all greasy now. <laughs> you clean it? Yeah, we can, you want to get your hands cleaned off? Yeah. Yeah, let's go clean your hands off. Okay, this is why I kept this jack handle for my old holler jack. And what I'm going to try to do is get the angle so that the socket sits up against the hub and doesn't twist off the bolt. Which, oh, it's behind the, it's on the other side of the van here, so. so we parked it. I think that's all of them. Holy cow, somebody didn't care when they put these on. We gotta pull everything apart. Bolt. That bolt's screwed up. Front wheel. Yeah, fix that front wheel with that wrench. All right, so I got a stack of nuts in there to hold this at the top. Fortunately, I had a big enough size. I thought that popped off. Wrong I used an impact with these once and destroyed it. So now I put them on there and I try to tap it on. Little bit before I put a wrench on it. And I don't know if this one maybe broke free before I put the impact on, so I might just need a little bit of grip, but I think I'll need to put that bar on here. How to wrench. Oh yeah, that's not, it didn't break free. Oh, son of a... All right, I think. Oh, did you get it? Yeah, you almost no. got that wheel off. You're crazy. I did it. You see that? Maybe. Oh, I did yes. it. Oh, well, you gotta hold the wrench on tighter. Don't pinch your fingers. Oh. Oh, I need to get a bolt. This one's not going back on. The other ones are pretty chewy. No, they look okay. Let's double check them all. I wonder if they can get one of these at a hardware store. Oh no! Try to take the bolt off. Yeah, try as hard as you can. Okay. Yeah, good luck. I'll have some pretty nasty grooves in that when I get it back apart. So it digs in pretty tight. see the fluid flex. I think this one will pop off in a couple taps. If the other side goes that easy, I'll make up for the rest of it. Fingers crossed. Oh, look at that. All that leaking axle grease keeps it from corroding together. That will be a whole other challenge. I'm going to spray some more fluid in. I'm working on getting these calipers off. Are you, sh are you sure it's not cheese? Well, wait, that's white. It's white? Well, there's white cheese. What are these? Mm -hmm. Those are all the bolts. Don't knock them over. Why? Because I need them. Looks like the carriers. What'd you do? You pulled it apart? No, that one's too big. Can you, can you try this bowl? No, it's too big. Can I try that? No. Not this time. 
Hey, don't do that. Hey, I'm trying to fix the wheel. Well, you don't need to hit the side of the van with a wrench to fix the wheel. No respect. We were 13 millimeter. The carrier. I should it would be smart to remove the brake line. Oh, it does have a rubber line. I wasn't sure. I should replace those. Because that could be why that side seized if the line's collapsed. Yeah, maybe I can find those at a local shop. Does the bowling come out with the spring in the line? Probably not. Yeah, it comes out with enough. Alright. Let me pull that line from the bottom bolt. Oh, and sen well, I get new sensors, so I might go just cut those, but we'll see if it comes out easy. Okay, so a couple things to note real quick is that there's two rotor sizes and there's three different brake manufacturers and they have different pads depending on this brand. I also read something about a spring clip that has to go in the back a certain way and I don't know if I can just pry this out or not. That's what I'm used to doing, so I'm going to try it because I'm going to get a new clip and caliper and everything. So this is the hopefully easier side and hopefully it just comes apart. I don't know if it comes with new carriers. It seems to be one that I'm used to. Fluid dripping off and I, I don't want to disconnect that up there even though I probably should. So I need to catch this and then spin the caliper off that line. Is this I'm talking about some kind of spring clip? That pins it up. Oh, no, there it goes. Right. So now, these are in really good shape. This van did have, uh, it was at auction, prior to it being at the auction I bought it from, and if I remember correctly, the windshield said no brakes. So I don't know if somebody replaced parts in the rear or the front or what they did to fix it before I got it. But. The fluid's coming. Well, of course it's coming through that because it would lock the wrong way. I'm a drippy guy under here. Yeah, so this one is still working right. Oh, there's the spring. So that just has to go in before the pads I bet. These, and there's a lot of meat left in those. But I don't, I'm not a fan of replacing one at a time. Because if they just did pads and that other caliper died, this one might be on the way. It's possible they replaced this one and not the other one, I have no idea. And then, I, there's no wear sensor on these. Because I don't think this is the wear sensor. Unless... Unless this moves with the... Because this goes way back here. How the hell would this sense wear? Maybe I'll get a new one and it'll have a, something on there that makes sense. I don't know. Uh, I'll pull the other side off for funsies. So, caliper carrier is a 19 millimeter as well. And this one looks like it might be accessible with an impact, which means somebody put it on here. Like is the last time they'd ever see it because they were sending it to auction. I can't get it to budge. Oh, I wish I could bench more. This would be easier. Slice my hand up and something. Oh, jeez. Christ. <laughs> That's stupid. I'm gonna have to look up the actual specs for these because that's. This one's way too tight. That's loose. I'm gonna round all these off. I'm gonna be really upset. Why do I have that dripping right in my face? It's hard. I feel like if I push hard enough, it's gonna make me fart. Oh, nope, that's still too tight. Oh, why did I do this to myself? It's a better job if I knew that. Gosh. <laughs> Some kind of cool joke. Right, can I get this over my face?
Yeah, everything's gonna roll down the driveway. God, I have pretty good life insurance. Too bad I use these jack stands. This one, I can to get the socket on because it's beef screws. So hopefully that means they couldn't put it on too tight as well. Got a wrench. Okay. Just don't. <laughs> I don't know. If this is even gonna come out. Theory proven. <laughs> Whoever had this couldn't get their impact in here. They definitely didn't do this one wrong. I don't know if the new if the kit comes with new carriers. But these are in good shape. Kind of worth sandblasting and painting on that just don't have time. I'm just gonna go back and with the NICs maybe on threads for not tight or Maybe I won't ever need to do brakes again because I'll get a better van before these go out. Because there's dudes rolling 70,000 miles on the rear brakes. Uh oh. Dog's getting in trouble. I'm trying to train her better, better work. Oh wow, that never happens, right? <laughs> We've just witnessed a modern day miracle. Must be because the shoes don't exist anymore. Sweet. Well, that makes me happy. Now I can measure this rotor. Like, actually measure it and make sure I'm not a crazy person and bought the wrong size. It should be 11.2 inches because that's 184 and a half millimeter. Okay, moment of truth. Yay, it's, o it's over 11, though. I did get the right ones. And I did crawl under and these have Bosch on them, so I'm confident the correct parts are coming. Let's see if I can get the other side off. And then really, I should just take this stuff out of here because none of that's hooked up anymore. Oh, there's the speed sensor. So that other one has to be, that has to be a wear sensor. Hmm. I do have a bad speed sensor somewhere. It might be worth replacing that while everything's apart. If I can get some of this stuff before oh, I need the van Saturday. So I've got three weekdays to knock it out. And then worst case, I could wait till Sunday to do van stuff. And the plot thickens, right? So look at this. It's got some doodad hanging off it. So I think that is, so this probably goes to the pad. Neither one were connected. I'm surprised. Well, I mean, I have lights, but uh, I still think I had a code for bad speed sensor. Maybe I'll scan this while everything's apart tonight. Also, these are 14 millimeter on this side. They were 13 on the other side. So if 14 is the factory size, that would lead me more to believe that that side was replaced and this side wasn't. Plus it looks way rustier. Party animal with his music blasting. If he drives over that rock, he's getting grounded. Oh, not even around it. I wonder if that song is copyrighted. Oh my gosh, he's a psychopath. What are you doing? Oh boy, I can't believe he's lived this long. Okay, two concerns. One, this side, well, aside from the brakes being completely worn from dragging, uh, you can see this one's really tapered. And on the caliper itself, this top piston won't go back and it's gone out so far the steel came off. But, completely different style slide pin bolts. So, I would imagine somebody bought the wrong parts. Which means that side might be the wrong parts. This may be the original ones. It just so happened that the bigger stuff fit. Someone's having a good time. So I'm going to get this carrier off and see if they're the same. But if the new brakes don't come with carriers, I might need to get a larger style carrier for the Bosch caliper. And I'll just essentially be converting these to the larger size. Because they worked, so clearly they're interchangeable. But I kind of wonder. Okay, so... I loosened this until I got it stuck together. Nothing to change directions on the back. 
to stick up against the leaves right i don't even know if i can move it it finally broke free yeah a little bit of heat some more fluid and then swung on it with the big boy which uh, mixed feelings about that but it's hitting it from underneath here swinging into the back chipped a bunch of pieces off um, i think it's going to clear the old crappy e-brake assembly but i was about to get the welder if you weld a bead along here usually that's enough heat to pop it off without injecting too much into like seals there's something that in here well if I have to do a wheel bearing from all the pounding I did, then uh, at least the brake parts would be new and they'll come off easy. Yeah, there's like no material left on that because I peeled it all off. I doubt there was much there to begin with. There's really no lip in here, so whatever. Almost everything's out. I got new rubber lines on the way, so I'm going to peel those off, see if I can gut this uh, parking brake, and then put new parts on, leave the wheels off, so that, well, I can get those lines on and bleed them with the wheels on. I did it before. So I'm gonna put the wheels all the way on, just kind of test, see if I feel like I can reach it well enough to assemble it and bleed it tomorrow. Oh, so this will be fun to compare, right? Because these are different. I know they're different. So here's, this had the little screws. Here's this one has the big pins. You can see, completely different bracket. And then, I'm gonna laugh even harder if the rotors are different sizes. I bet they are. I bet these are the smaller ones. I'm probably supposed to have the smaller ones. Yep. Uh, mm, nope. Yeah, the rotors are the same size. So right size the rotors, different brand pad and caliper, but they were clearly working. And then this side that was a better shape. You can see the rust where it was wearing more. That surface rust from the snow we had this morning. It's 38 degrees today. So yeah, I'm happy. I think the this side was a Bosch. New stuff's a Bosch. It's gonna work out just fine. Okay, I have a little dinner. Almost thought about not taking these off, but the last thing I need is something busting and flopping around in there, like this little hook, hooky do that holds them on. Right, see that thing that popped out? That's the only thing that really retains the pads, and they can start rocking around. So, oh, I only have it on one side. With that out, I think I can just pry this off. This should just be in slots. And there's the power oh, big, got all these springs. I haven't touched drum brakes in so long. There's a spring up too, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Best way to approach that one. With a pair of snips, I would guess. That's bad for that. But this will be the same, all similar way. Oh, that does have a retention. I kind of like that. Instead of the ones that have like the T and you have to turn them, this one you just got to push on them and they kind of do their own thing. If you were actually replacing these and going to keep them, this is the way it would go. Because you'd have new springs, so you can do new stuff with the old springs. Right? And then, so that's, that's the adjuster. So, like, the chances of me being able to rotate that on either of these is zero. Absolutely zero. Oh, I can see the wheel speed sensor now. So, there's one of them. It appears to exist. <laughs> there's a big chunk taken out of it. doesn't mean it's any good, but seeing how it goes through that cast piece, I don't think I can get that out without a considerable amount of effort. I don't want to deal with it right now. So, all I'm going to do is make sure this bottom is hooked to the cable still. I'm going to cut. I'm going to just cut that cable and pull it out so just the cable's in there. So I don't want this flopping around and rubbing on stuff. Let me find something to snip that with. Which one? That one? Yeah, you can. Yeah, i use that. You go do the front wheel, okay? Remember, don't go underneath it. Stay up, stay out from underneath. I think these little bolt cutters I have might... I don't know if they 
can reach it in there or not. Side cutters will though. Okay, try again. These are a little pointier than slip down in between that stuff. Yeah, the leaves are not are strong enough to cut the cable. Oh, yep, goodbye. So that's just the mechanism that this cable pulls. It's supposed to pull. Up, so this goes out and it spreads those thingies. But now I don't have to worry about anything falling into the rotating assembly. Do the same on the other side. And yeah, so I gotta pull those lines off. And I'm looking at my jack stand, and it is kind of sketchy because we're going like here. So if the front wheels weren't chalked, I think this would roll right back. But I do still have a little bit of tension on that jack as like a backup, and I'm trying to do my best not to be like under it so maybe that would be a good reason to just leave those rubber lines alone get this all bolted back on so it's on the wheels when i do the rubber lines and bleed it i think that's the way i'll do it okay i found it so the kit i bought it's the only one of the three that has this flat spring clip like i got which is for single rear wheel 15 inch i don't care as long as they fit so or and it says it fits 15s and we'll find out once we put the dualies on but it had one in there already and it didn't make sounds or blow up and it has you swing the caliper up out of the way i'm going to try to load it and then see if i can just push it in against that spring and get the holes to line up if i can't i'll do it the factory way i was trying to see which way this goes in but the, the detail is lacking now the old one which was Clearly put on by some degenerate that owned this before me has the tab down on this side and like the thick part on this side so it's a little shorter here longer here and that seems to line up like perfect along that edge uh, and this one yeah if we look at that edge this one would line up and this one looks like it'd be too long and it's the opposite on the inside so i'm pretty confident that it goes in this way Right, if I try to put it in like this, because when this doesn't move, it stays with the caliper the way that previous person has it, like it doesn't fit right, it's not going to slip in there. But if I do it this way, push those long tabs in first, and then slide that down, like that looks correct to me. Well, not really. Maybe I can try it the other way. When I tried it this way last time, it didn't didn't want to go but I meant oops <laughs> I'm gonna start that over yeah so if I do it this way like it slides in but they oops this like this no like this it looks it almost seems right but it, this is so close to this edge Right, it's really close to this face, and this is the furthest it's ever going to be. So as soon as it pushes out, it'll come off it. So I think that that is correct, the way it is in that other one. I seem to figure out why this won't, like, shimmy down in there as easily as I predicted it might. I don't know if people have trouble with this. Okay, so if I jam that in there. This gets so tight it doesn't want to slip. Oh, oh. That looks better. That looks more even. See, it's a little further away from this wall, and this one's a little further that way. I like that. Yeah, I get the packing grease off of these. So I usually do it this side first. Just so when I flip it over, it's not touching the ground. off of that and the anti-corrosion stuff you can see a bunch of it on this side. my hands are kind of greasy too so I put on a new pair of gloves it's for fun of course
course the book tells you to throw some lug nuts in. You can line up easier. Which is probably a good idea, but I guess I could put one or two in. Oh wait, no, this has studs. Oh wait. Oh no, the uh, the guys that hold the wheel thing on, because this gets pinched between them. One will be good enough. Is that the right bolt? Oh, that's the one I rounded off. It's probably all jacked. I'm going to get a new one of those. Maybe I can steal one off the other van. It's five plugs, so I don't know if they're compatible or not. We'll find out one day. Are those? Those aren't the same. Okay, those are a little longer than the caliper bolts, it looks like. Yeah, those are long, they're the same, the same size and thread as the caliper bolts. But this longer one is what holds the wheel stuff on. So these are the two I need. And now I just got my gloves all greasy. Damn it. Yeah. After a small struggle, I decided not to reinvent the wheel. So we're gonna go with the factory advice, which is yeah, take the thing with no pads and you put it on. I already moved that bottom bolt and it wasn't very tight, so I would have had to torque those anyway. It's a good thing I checked. But essentially, this carrier in place. Starting. Down again. Tighten this down, but essentially, I'll tighten the carrier down and then you swing this up, slip your pads in, and then you slip this back down and put your rear pin, slider pin in. So, let me look up torque for those and get moving. Okay, it's getting dark, but essentially, in the, by the book, you slide this on like this, you get this guy on, and then you put the wheel ring on on top, then you do the pads, which makes sense because it would hold this nice and, and steady while you're working. So the issue I'm having, uh, which really isn't an issue because it should be fine, but the, we know from looking at the pictures that the brakes I'm putting on are for single rear wheel 15 inch and my van's dual rear wheel. When you come here, installation for the single rear wheel says the brake caliper adapter also known as that um, carrier, 90 newton meters, 66 foot pounds. For the dual rear, rear wheel, they say 170 newtons, 125 foot pounds. So my thought is because I have been putting single rear wheel calipers and adapters on here, and they're the same bolt, they're going to be fine at 170. It's a big enough bolt that's not going to yield it. So I'll do it to. 125 foot pounds, 170 newtons, and then the wheel flange ring, 200 newtons, wheel, f oh, you know what, brake caliper adapter installation, install this, do the single rear wheel not have a flange ring, that might make sense, right, hmm, I didn't think much about that, uh, <laughs> but, so yeah, then do the flange ring, and then you do your your pads and stuff. So uh, annoying. It's getting cold though. I'm just gonna do this one side and get the heck in the building. Okay, so this carrier's hand tight, not torqued yet. And then clean the surfaces as best I could. How do you go? You go like that. Yay. Yeah, I had one bolt ready. Oh, make sure it's not the rounded one. There's the rounded one. See the rounded one. Oh, the deal with that. Well, it's disappointing that the single rears don't have this ring. So I was hoping to steal a bolt from that to replace that rounded one. 
pretty in my opinion. Um, mm. We'll have to locate one of these. I'll clean one up, see what grade they are and all that kind of stuff, and hopefully I can find one at a hardware store somewhere in town. But these big metric sizes, especially a flange bolt like this, kind of be hard to come by. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember to torque them later. So I'm going to put two of these on here. That way I know, hey, I haven't put these bolts in. Nothing's torqued. Yep, it goes right into place. You can see it on the spring. All I need to do is put this up here. No, oh, it's actually further. It needs to, or no, it's not. Yeah, so that needs to push against the spring and then thread into that hole. If I can. Just a half. I think it's started. Just to make sure I'm not like somehow cross threading. This thing's so long. I find it hard to believe. Yeah, easy peasy. Same thing, I haven't torqued these either, but I'll remember because I didn't put the rest of the front on. And then this one didn't have a shipping plug, which is kind of sad. These go to like 20 something. I'll have to look it up. I actually torque it. Oh, that one was actually nice and tight. So, I gotta plug that hole. Okay, yeah, you can see the line. Where the line goes in, they didn't ship it with a plug. It's in a plastic bag, so it's okay, but in a pinch, you're dropping your plug down in there. It'll keep animals from crawling in it during the night. Okay, I have to torque bolts, put lines on, and bleed it, put wheels on. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, I'm probably going to have to bleed it so I can use the brakes to tighten these bolts down because I don't. I thought about. Maybe I could put one wheel on and do it, but you can see it's going to come right across here and block the bolt. So these have to be torqued with the wheels off, and I don't want to shove a wrench in my new rotors. And I don't have to park it right. So that's going to be the answer is getting the brakes blood and then tightening the wheel rings and then whatever, whatever. So 100 new, because I'm going to do the dual rear wheel setting, which is higher. 125 foot pounds for the carriers. Yep, oh, that's right. I'm gonna go this way, so I'm pushing down and now pulling up. Put my back out. Or I could do it the last guy did and put him on an impact. Oh, this side I'm gonna have to go. At least I won't trap my torque wrench in like I did my other wrench. This is where it collapses on me and I die. There we go. Oh, can we do trap? Get off. Get off pain and agony. <laughs> really? Like why? Why me? I need to flip the switch. that one before we put it on because I think in my wrench behind it. But these are 204 inch pounds, which is not a lot. Those are a 13 wrong size socket. <laughs> yeah, it's just not very much. So I can't get that in there. I could put a crow foot on it, but I have to do math. Okay, so new rubber line, right? The way these go on, you screw this into the caliper first, and this goes up into the little spring clip on the thing, and the brake line threads into it, because the brake nut is supposed to spin on the brake line until it's tight. Well, I have this one loose, and it's not spinning on the line, because the copper nickel lines I was so excited about are not copper nickel lines, they're knockoffs from a horrible place. So they're all maybe a little hard to see. You can see there they're super rusty. Turns out they're just copper nickel coated. So I'm gonna 
spin the rubber line off and then see if I can somehow break that nut free. Because if, if it turn, it's like it's turning the whole line with the nut. And I gave it a bunch of heat and I gave it some coil. Give some more coil, why not? But if I can't get that to free up and it spins, it's gonna destroy that line. Then I'll have to flare a new end, find an, I hate it. I hate things that are lies. Okay, the pads are out, the caliper's off, and then it, for some reason I thought I had to remove the carrier, but forgot I don't, so this will be a little easier than I thought. Still feels kind of dumb, like smart dumb, big brain stuff. Uh, got that nut that's stuck on there. So, I'm going to take this line, wait, where's the old line? I the old line. Oh, this one didn't have a pad on it. Which is the same line. They are the same length. Good. This is good. I saw some longer versions online and I wasn't sure if these would actually reach. But so I'm just gonna slip this on here. I hope I can spin it on without cross turning anything. Yep. Yummy. It's seated and I don't have the spring thing for that anyway, so this doesn't matter. But I got where's my squeezy things? Ah, oh, gone. Okie dokes. New line. Just gonna grab that big thick part of the rim with these vice grips. Shouldn't take too much pressure to get a good seal. Okay, maybe a little more. <laughs> uh, this is the side that was hanging. And if it's from the line collapsing, this will be nice to have a new line on it. Arr, click! And then step two. Hopefully my hideous face isn't disrupting anybody. Boop. Take this side. I'm going to twist it left a bit. Hopefully that'll help the thread start. Without, like I said, cross threading. Shit, I don't know if it looks like it wants to, but I think I can do this. Focus and don't push too hard. Oop. I think it's starting. Oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like this for like an hour I'm trying to hold it straight while it threads in. Oh no, there we go. That's the one. So. Just keep threading the caliper on until this gets tight and I'll tighten it down the best I can. Without twisting it too much, I hope. The kit actually included uh, copper rings for banjo bolts. So I'm sure these calipers are used in a bunch of different kind of cars. How nice would it be to have a banjo bolt right now? Okay, so that's pretty tight. I need a 15 millimeter. That's I pre-size this so I'm going to let go. And really, I'm going to wrench this guy down. That's, that's off ways. There's tight ways. Here. Okay. So that should be good. And right there, it's going to rub a lot. So if I spin it this way, it's going to rub less. No, that's worse. So this way, best way, it's not the greatest, but it'll work. I need to put that top pin in. Oh, you know what? Maybe it should go over the... Maybe that's why this was bent all stupid. Because someone tried to feed it underneath. Jesus. Why do I do what the previous owner did? Assuming it was correct. When I know at this point that they were complete jag -offs. Of course, I tried to like torque this thing. They back off. Round two. Okay, back on. I didn't tighten it all the way yet this time, just in case I find out that I'm wrong twice in a row. 
probably did go above because there's a wear mark on the spring from where the rubber was running on it. But you gotta put this bolt in first because it's too long. And then hope you have it lined up well enough. Actually, it's gonna line up way better. If I do the bottom one first, just a little bit, and I can pull that back out to put the pad on. Because I don't want to fight the pads doing the top one. It's just way harder to reach. Started. There we go, that takes the weight off. So I'm gonna have to hold it up myself. Should probably grease those. Right. Well, yeah, it'll rust into that sleeve if I don't. I'm gonna start it so it's not hanging by the line, and then I'm gonna come back with some grease. Good enough. It's not backing up. It's not backing up? No. It's not driving? No. I'm Why not? Well, it's not on. I like this red. How do you like my new seat? Is this a nice seat? Yeah, I, I like this. I, I want red. Oh, you want red again? Yeah. Okay, now how do I drive a van? I, I Show me what I look like when I drive the van. Red. I look red? Because I'm <laughs> mad at traffic? Yeah, where's traffic? And then this go. Yeah? All right, finally got some fluid on the way home. So day four, third day working on it. Got to bleed them out. Filled the reservoir, gave it a few pumps uh, at the pedal. I got a drip back here. So it must be this upper that I was messing with. It's all rounded off. I was able to crack it free a little bit and try to snug that up and hope that it stops leaking. All right, 
we are. You can see that big rusty line right there. That's the fake copper nickel that was on Amazon. I looked it up and the stuff I bought, uh, axles, something, something, starts with an A, and they sell a 20 foot roll for 20 bucks. It's a deal of a lifetime. Um, I don't know, I was buying brake fluid. The guys at the shop said, oh yeah, we've got, which way is right? Uh, this way. Go to clamp even. Oh my god, why is he coming this way? <sighs> anyway, they have copper nickel, an actual copper nickel mine, and it's $78 for a 25 foot piece. So. <sighs> Feels like it's in my. Loosen this a little bit. It's still got a drip, but it could be pulled up up there. Can't see it. There it is. Come on, baby. Oh. Can't reach anything. Mm. Thirty-eight degrees and raining. It's the best time to do your breaks. Fucking hell, come on. It's definitely still leaking. Yeah. Tighter, tighter. Huh, that must have gotten that a lot more loose than I thought. Hope the line isn't cracked or something because it's definitely spinning the line with it that's why I stopped putting it on ah. how are you like this that's probably what my parents used to say to me okay Ooh. get some towel and wipe that off that way I can see if it's still dripping when I pressurize it a little bit Looks like there's nothing new. I gave it four or five pumps and couldn't push it all the way to the floor anymore and I haven't even blown them out, so that's a good sign. Granted, once I fire it up and have vacuum to the booster, things will change. I'll get more pressure. Hopefully it won't start leaking. So I found this thing that I bought a long time ago to use on my Volkswagens and stuff. It fits the Mercedes cap. I used it last time. I was pretty happy with how it went. And if you're not careful, you can overflow. Like if you take this cap off without depressurizing it, it'll just fill this up and come up the top. But if you pull this cap first, it'll kind of suck up anything that it shouldn't have in there. Um, they specify 15 psi. Oh, we have like 10 or 12. I don't think 15 is really necessary. I think I can get this done with one bottle, but I bought two just in case. Because they are pretty long lines. Of course, it's windy, so my hotel is jacked. It's all plastic and it's cold. It's not flexible. I'll end up doing the fronts too, but you always do the rears first because they're longer lines. And on some vehicles, it actually matters. Like if you bleed the fronts and then go do the rears, you'll introduce air into the front. How far are we going to go? There it comes. So you can see it's coming out, there's little bubbles in it. I'm really surprised to see fluid already. And of course it could have been something that was just stuck in the lines. But 
Yeah, I'm gonna let this run for a while. We should see if there was a bunch of trap. Uh, this will look okay, and then after a little bit, a big chunk of air will come flying through it. There's some. Well, that, so that's not in the line. Oh, maybe, no, probably it is. But sometimes if you loosen this too much, you'll actually suck air in through the threads, and it'll look like you're not blood. Nothing pops through before I can tighten this up. I think it's good. Yeah. Good, good. Alright, so that one's blood. I'm going to rinse and repeat on all four wheels. I'm going to do the rear left next, followed by the rear right. Just basically going from the longest line to the shortest uh, until they're all done. And then I'll try it out. If it feels nice and tight, I'll uh, start the van. Just make sure it doesn't go to the front of the booster. To do these uh, wheel rail bolts, which are 200 newtons. In, uh, in America, that's 145 foot pounds, 48, something like that. It's not holding it at all. Oh no. And you need to pump it more. Okay, so I need more brake. Maybe I'll have someone step on it. Okay. You good? Doing it. Alright. Yep, that did it. Okay, last thing, I put the wheels back out. The kid said he doesn't want this anymore, so I'm gonna put it up the road and see if it's gone by the time uh, I'm done with the van. Okay, so the first wheel that came off went under the van, so that's the one I'm gonna put on last. That way they're rotating the same direction they used to. It probably doesn't matter, but you know. It just depends on whether they're radials or their bias ply, and who knows what year it is anymore. Oh, this looks like a pain in the butt. I'm gonna swing these things around. Ooh, you know what would be smart? I'm gonna line the valve stems up so I know where the rear valve stem is. It's always hard to find. It'll probably bite me in the butt. It'll end up like now I won't be able to get an air chuck on it because they'll be in the way of each other. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Torque for these is 144 on the dual wheeled vans because they use studs. And then the, if you have a single wheel van, it's one so, or what's 140 on these, it's 170 or 177. It's in the manual, it's all the way in there. Oh, oh, lost the ball. Yep, she said that. <sighs> These sat in a bucket full of rainwater, so they coated them, wiped them off, and sprayed WD 40 all over them. Hopefully, they won't rust under these lugs. But... I take it out on the road. Just 
I've noticed that this rear axle is the same. Oops, I didn't do that one. The same uh, red RTV all over the place. So hopefully, I'm going to get piss plugged up with that, but it lasted so far. tools. <laughs> That's okay. Alright, well it stops. So, let me get out on the open road and bet these in. <laughs> 